having a good start to your new year. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Veronica. If you're new here, I talk about all things fashion, sewing, and sustainability. For today's video, it's going to be a little bit different. Not necessarily a tutorial, but kind of you following me along while I make this piece. So my mom has really been wanting a new jacket. She loves blazers and just like jackets in general. And she has been really wanting like a black denim blazer. So I decided that I was going to finally make one for her. So today you guys are going to be following me along while I make this blazer for her. But it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be like a regular style blazer but she doesn't want lining in it. She wants shoulder pads in it. And a blazer without lining is like a crime. But <laughs> the liner, it, it just makes it too hot for her because you know we live on a tropical island. And she loves to wear jackets all the time so she wants like a thin light jacket and I am using like a dark stretchy denim jacket or fabric so that in itself is going to be kind of heavier so without a lining it'll be more breathable the goal is to make it like this blazer this was actually mine that I thrifted uh, to be like an oversized kind of blazer on me but she went through my closet and she found it and she was like I'm keeping this she wants the pockets here to be like exposed, like out, like not like a, a welt pocket. This is called a welt pocket. She wants it more like exposed. So that is a task for today. I'm also going to be making my own pattern copying this blazer. I have not copied a garment to turn it into like a pattern in years. That's what I used to do when I was younger. Let's just get straight into the video. We're going to start off by tracing out the pattern. Let's go. Oh god. That was good though. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is iron out your piece. Um, this one's already basically like pretty ironed out. And this is a Cupro silk, which is so nice. But we're going to be using oh, this black denim there's a lot of stretch in it so then you want to identify all of the pieces that you have on this so there's a lot <laughs> first there is the front panels that have a dart in it and also like the welt pockets and stuff but I'm just gonna ignore them along with the top collar and it has like an under panel under the armpit and then the back has like a princess seam dart that comes from the armhole and the center back and then of course the sleeves has a top sleeve and an under sleeve piece so the sleeve has two two pieces so of course we're just gonna be working with one side so technically you'd want to like flip your clothes inside out and trace it but since there's a lining and there's like different like there's an extra dart here inside the lining I'm just going to use the outer shell there's so many cars I'm sorry I'm gonna use the outer shell all right so I have all my tools I have a tracing wheel pen pencil clear ruler, paper scissors, regular fabric shears, and my rulers. I have like a French curve ruler, a hip curve, and an L square ruler. We're first going to start off by drawing our grain line on our paper so that everything is nice and straight. Now I'm going to take my jacket and I'm going to lay it only one side on top of that line we're just going to be tracing out this first front section because there's two panels here so i'm actually going to start off with these pieces underneath the armhole these little small panels just because i realize this paper isn't long enough to fit the whole front part so i'm going to place the middle part of this section 
on that line that we drew. I almost forgot, you also need a cutting mat. So I'm gonna place it right underneath. I'm gonna use my fabric weights. Let's weigh it out. I'm gonna take my tracing wheel, I'm gonna trace out right on top of the seams. You want to make sure not to move the fabric for the jacket too much. I'm going to draw another line for the back underarm piece. Honestly, the tracing wheel makes it so much easier. I used to not do that. I didn't have a tracing wheel when I was younger. I would just like kind of move the fabric and like trace along and it would kind of mess it up but using the tracing wheel is so much easier so on this piece of paper i can still fit like the collar in here so i'm gonna trace out the collar i'm trying to use up like every square inch of this paper so i don't waste it so i'm gonna try and squeeze in the bottom part of the sleeve Okay, so I'm gonna start tracing out all of the pieces. I'm gonna start by following the line, the dots with my pencil, and then I'm gonna go in and clean them up. So we're working with the collar first. So I'm gonna need my French curve, my hip, and my straight ruler. I think I'm gonna start off over here and just really clean up those lines and make them really nice and sharp. And I alternate with my rulers to find like the best way to, you know, what curve works best for that shape. So you're never just like, it's never just like as easy as placing it, it like perfectly fits. So we really gotta work with it. So I have the first half of the collar done. So we're gonna be cutting it on the fold here. So that I only have to work with one side. You could add the seam allowance now if you wanted, but I like to add it on my fabric whenever I cut it out because I like to make sure that my fab, my patterns line up uh, with each other before adding the seam allowance. And sometimes it can just be kind of like annoying and in the way. So I just like to add it on the fabric. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the same thing for the rest of these pieces. Okay, so I like to take my pattern pieces. I did this in my last video. I kind of showed this, but I like to match up my pattern pieces to make sure everything lines up. So I like to snip my paper uh, just like up to the line so that I can fold it right on the line just because the snips make it easier for the fabric to, or for the paper to like um, conform so now that I have it folded on the line I will match it up with the piece that it would connect to so I'm going to match it up right here. And I just like go along the line on this other pattern. And it matches up perfectly. I'm going to do it one more time to make sure. I didn't actually move anything. Okay, now that I'm doing it from the bottom up, this one's just a little bit lower, so I'm going to just redraw that a little bit higher so it matches up. So I'm gonna save these because I have to line up this side with what would be the front panel. Okay, so I'm gonna put all those pieces to the side and we're going to cut out 
some more paper to trace out this front panel and the back. So after I traced everything out and like cleaned it up with the lines, I went in with my measuring tape and I just measured out like each little section that I traced out, like this armhole, I just measured out how much uh, it was from each point and then make sure that it lined up on the piece of paper and it was actually a little bit too short so I had to extend it and so I extended it on both sides, not just one side. Um, I made it a little bit higher at the arm, uh, or like the shoulder seam, and a little bit longer on the, um, well actually I had actually made it a little smaller so I just put it back to where it originally met up to measure up to seven and a quarter. And then I did the same thing for the shoulder seam and the collar here, just made sure that they all uh, lined up with the actual jacket and this front panel actually had a dart in it but I just ignored the dart and if I actually do need one then I'll just add it um to the fabric like I'll have my mom try it on and if she wants it more fitted then I'll add a dart what's up guys so it is two days later actually we're gonna continue working on this jacket. So I realized uh, yesterday that I didn't even cut out the uh, facing for the front uh, collar area and the pockets. Uh, so we still have to do that and then we're ready to cut it out of the fabric. So let's just get started because I'm starting this late again. It's like, it's three o'clock. I keep coming in really late, <laughs> but it's okay. Whew. I feel tired. I slept. And I worked out this morning, but I don't know. I'm feeling tired. Okay, for the pockets, I'm just gonna do two outer pockets. I'm gonna make them five by five, I think. wondering what I do with all of my paper scraps because I do always have you know scraps from pattern making I have this big bag which I show in my studio um, transformation vlog where I put all of my paper scraps and I reuse them and I turn them into new paper which I need to do because the bag is full so I'll probably film how I do that soon. But I'm almost done. I'm just cutting out the sleeve, the top sleeve, and then we're gonna cut this out of the fabric. So I'm going to add half an inch seam allowance around mostly all of the edges, but for all of the hems, the bottom hem of the jacket and the hem of the sleeve, I'm going to add an inch. So I decided to just trace out this jacket instead of, for the pattern, instead of like making the pattern from scratch because pattern making is not my strong suit. I do not love pattern making. It's not super difficult, it's just time consuming and it's just like not my favorite part. If I could avoid it, I would. <laughs> like if I could have my own pattern maker, which is the goal, that would be amazing and she could just make all my patterns, I'd be like, hell yeah. But since I don't love pattern making, I feel like I've 
avoid making certain designs sometimes that I want to make because I don't feel like going through the process of pattern making it which is why I drape and then transfer to paper most of the time basically all of the time so I always keep my designs kind of simple at least for like my made to order and all of that because I don't want a pattern making <laughs> It's not that I don't know how to, it's that I don't want to. But I'm trying to conquer that this year and get out of my comfort zone and start making more things that are more experimental and like, or just things that I wanna make that typically would take more pattern making and stop using that as my excuse. So if you're an aspiring designer and you're worried that like because you don't know how to make pattern make or you're not that good at it, it's gonna like restrict you from being a designer, definitely won't. Ultimately, like you it isn't as a, as a designer, you're not always pattern making. Obviously, you are designing and you have someone else that's gonna pattern for you. Um, but obviously we're not all there yet, so. It's really all just about practice. And really the only way I got better was through practice and just making more and more things and watching videos. And I went to school and I learned a lot more there, which it helped me because I'm a very hands-on person. So reading pattern books for me isn't always the best because <laughs> I just start to get like, not lost, but like bored. The best way is also just to work with pre-made patterns like you can buy on Etsy or like old I have a lot of old vintage paper patterns um that were my grandma's and also you can buy new patterns now at Joann's and stuff and just work with those and there's like no shame in that you don't have to make all your patterns like it's annoying sometimes all right, so I'm almost done cutting everything out. I just need five more pieces. And then we're gonna start sewing. Yee, I still feel really, really sleepy. Like, it keeps hitting me. Okay, so I'm going to serge all the pieces now, like all the way around. I already did this piece just so that they are nice and clean because I'm not putting a lining so gotta make sure the edges are good and whenever I'm doing uh, stuff like this where it's just like the edges I don't need to cut off any excess fabric I like to actually turn off or uh, turn off but the blade here because there's a blade you know that cuts fabric whenever you're going through it and so just to make sure that I don't cut anything that I don't want obviously to be cut I remove the blade so that it's just sewing the edges and then I also added interfacing to the facing pieces that are going to be like on the inside of the jacket so this is like the front uh, collar thing and then this is the actual collar I only have blue interfacing because it was a lot cheaper whenever I got it, but I put it on both sides so that the collar stays up nice and both pieces of the facing and those are the only things that got interfacing. Beautimus. I miss sewing with <laughs> cotton fabrics and like medium heavyweight fabrics. I'm always working with lightweight fabrics and really they just give you so much trouble and cottons and stuff are just so easy. They're so easy and I complicate my life. But I just love the way like drapes, like lightweight fabrics drape and flow and so it's a struggle that I put myself through.
It'd be kind of cool to do like a top stitch all around, like a white top stitch, but I don't think my mom likes that. I think she likes it like black. Oh, black. Her favorite color. Now I'm gonna go iron all of these seams flat open. Okay, so I'm using I'm using a tailor's ham to put underneath all my seams just to get them really nice and flat. A tailor's ham is literally it's such an essential if you consistently sew. If you have a curve in a fabric or like in a seam, like you just place it right underneath. And you just like sew right on top and it just really helps you get those curves nice and flat because otherwise like just trying to flatten it out on the ironing board sometimes like it just doesn't do it well enough and I've also made this like half sphere uh, foam thing myself it's basically like a foam ball that you can get like at a craft store and I cut it in half so I just have like a half sphere and then I put uh, some muslin fabric and then I pinned, <laughs> I pinned it at the bottom just to keep it really tight. And then I use this for like things that have a really, like for cups mostly, for like my bustier cups, like to really get a nice curve. Um, and it really like keeps its shape really well. It's a little more expensive than you would think. I mean, it's like $23. It's not terrible, but um, it's more than I thought it would have cost. I got it off of Etsy, I think. Yeah. I'll link it down below. Okay, so I'm gonna finish sewing this whole jacket now, but I just wanted to show y'all, like, clearly, I forgot to measure out one of the patterns because you see this extra bit right here? Or I accidentally cut the wrong pencil line and it's just like a little bit higher. Like the rest of them are fine. It's just this pattern piece on both sides. It's a little higher, but it's fine because I can just like match it up with this here because it this just randomly like goes down. So that's why it's important to check all your patterns so that everything is nice and even. But I'm just gonna like search that extra piece off because it's really not that big of a deal. Okay, so I'm just about done with the jacket. The last thing is left to do is hand baste or hand sew this facing in place and hand sew the hem for the bottom and for the sleeves. I'm going to do a blind stitch, which basically means it's like a hidden stitch that you're going to do on the inside that won't show on the outside. It's much easier than it sounds but it is more time consuming but I just want it to look really nice and clean so I just have to hand base that and then I'm going to take these old shoulder pads that I have because I always buy like you know vintage clothing and they have shoulder pads and I don't like them so I take them out but I save them all so I'm going to take these and I'm going to cover them in the same fabric and hand sew them inside so that you know there's not like these plaid random shoulder pads in it and it looks like nice and clean so I'm gonna get that finished up we're gonna hand base and then we'll be finished lot of fun making this I honestly forgot how much I love making tailored jackets so I am re-inspired to make more I love it it looks so well done my mom is obsessed with it she was literally so shocked and it fits her so well she didn't want to be in this video today but I'm going to take some photos of her wearing it tomorrow don't forget to like and subscribe so if you want to see more of this you don't miss it, put on your notification, your post notifications. 
I try to post every week. I do post every week, but not on the same day because I have really bad internet. So they come out sometime during the week. I hope you guys like this video and you learned something new and I will see you in the next one.